Fingertip force control is essential in the development of motor skills. Athletes in a variety of sports, such as golf, tennis, cricket, and kendo, rely on precise force control to excel. Similarly, consistent fingertip force control is vital for pianists who must ensure the evenness of their notes during performances. The goal of our study is to investigate the use of electrical muscle stimulation as a means to enhance fingertip force control. In order to effectively manage fingertip force in a closed loop system, wearable or embedded sensors are needed to measure the force. For instance, fingertip force can be measured using sensors worn on the fingers. Exoskeleton gloves can aid in controlling fingertip force. However, devices attached to the fingers may interfere with the user's finger manipulation and alter tactile sensations. We introduce a wearable system that assists in fingertip force control by utilizing active bioacoustic sensing and EMS. Active bioacoustic sensing is based on the principles of active acoustic sensing and can be employed for microgesture recognition and differentiation of various levels of touch force. Our sensing method for estimating fingertip force employs a machine learning regression model. The advantage of combining active bioacoustic sensing and EMS is that the user's fingers remain unencumbered as the piezo elements for sensing are attached to the back of the hand and the electrodes for EMS are attached to the forearm. Additionally, active bioacoustic sensing can be used concurrently with EMS as the EMS current does not interfere with acoustic signals. Consequently, it is possible to control the intensity of EMS based on the fingertip force estimated by active bioacoustic sensing in a closed loop system, allowing our wearable system to interactively assist users in controlling fingertip force. We developed three prototypes and conducted user studies to explore whether our system can effectively assist with fingertip force control under various target forces ranging from weak to strong. In this study, we focused particularly on lateral pinch force, which is grip force achieved with the pad of the thumb and the lateral surface of the index finger to grasp objects. In our active bioacoustic sensing system, two piezo elements are attached to the back of the user's hand. One serves as a speaker, generating a wave pattern that travels through the hand, while the other functions as a microphone, receiving the vibration response. When a user alters the thumb's posture or applies a pinch force, the shape and hardness of the back of the hand change due to the muscles and bones involved. As a result, the boundary condition between the piezo elements and the skin changes in a manner similar to different touch gestures and active acoustic sensing. The ability to estimate both posture and force simultaneously with only two piezo elements attached to the back of the hand provides a significant advantage for active bioacoustic sensing compared to other sensing methods. In order to apply EMS, electrodes are placed on the flexor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis longus muscles of the forearm. When the current pinch force is lower than the target force, EMS is applied to the flexor pollicis longus muscle to increase the pinch force. Conversely, when the current pinch force exceeds the target force, EMS is applied to the extensor pollicis longus muscle to decrease the pinch force. Our system assumes that the user voluntarily controls the pinch force simultaneously with the involuntary control provided by EMS. For involuntary pinch force control, we utilize either proportional control or on-off control to adjust the EMS intensity. We developed three prototypes, all of which were designed based on the common principles of active bioacoustic sensing and EMS. The primary difference between the three prototypes lies in the method of attaching the piezo elements to the back of the hand, however, all of them are capable of estimating fingertip force. As a result, we can choose the most suitable form depending on the application, allowing users to wear the piezo elements using double-sided tape, a wrist brace, or a fingerless glove. For each prototype, we compared the estimated force and force sensor data in a pilot study. The results suggest that our system can effectively estimate pinch force using active bioacoustic sensing with an average error of less than 1.5 n. We conducted three user studies to assess the feasibility of our prototypes in assisting with pinch force control under various conditions. In the first study, we evaluated the effectiveness of our system in assisting pinch force control using active bioacoustic sensing and EMS. In the second study, 
we determine the optimal sense of agency for force control, taking into account the combination of voluntary and involuntary force control. This is because we believe that the sense of agency plays a critical role in EMS applications as agency is significantly reduced when the user's muscles are moved by EMS. In the third study, we verified whether our system aids in maintaining a consistent grip force in interactive applications such as golf. All user studies were approved by our institution's ethical review board. The goal of user study one was to evaluate the effectiveness of our system in assisting with pinch force control using active bioacoustic sensing and EMS, specifically determining whether the system could help users maintain pinch force at target forces of 3, 6, and 9N. To verify the basic principle of our system, we employed the simplest prototype, i.e., the first prototype. The experimental results indicate that the prototype could estimate pinch force using active bioacoustic sensing while presenting EMS and assist users in reducing the absolute error under target forces of 3 and 6N through EMS feedback. However, under the target force of 9N, the prototype failed to assist with pinch force control. We believe this is because participants followed incorrect feedback based on poor force estimation under the target force of 9N. To avoid following incorrect feedback, the sense of agency for force control is crucial that is determining whether to follow EMS instructions. The goal of user study 2 was to determine the optimal conditions regarding the sense of agency, taking into consideration the combination of voluntary and involuntary force control. To avoid estimation errors due to changes in the boundary condition, we used the second prototype, which secures the piezo elements with a wrist brace. Participants pinched a force sensing resistor and were asked to maintain their pinch force close to the target forces, which changed randomly every three seconds. The target forces were set at three levels. During the 120-second test, participants were asked to maintain their pinch force close to the target forces under the following three conditions. The first condition is without EMS. They looked at the target forces displayed and applied pinch forces using only voluntary force control, that is EMS was not applied. The second condition is with EMS. They looked at the target forces and applied pinch forces with voluntary force control, assisted by involuntary force control provided by EMS. The third condition is only EMS. They did not look at the target forces and applied pinch forces using only involuntary force control, that is they simply followed the EMS instructions. The results showed that the mean absolute error with EMS was lower than that without EMS and only EMS. This means that voluntary force control assisted by involuntary force control through EMS can achieve more sensitive force control even though involuntary force control cannot surpass voluntary force control. The goal of user study 3 was to verify whether our system helps maintain a constant force in a sporting situation. We selected golf because it is a popular game and has been studied in previous work using EMS. Based on kinematics and kinetics in golf, the aim of our system is to help novices maintain a constant grip force while putting because previous studies reported that the variability of muscle activity for expert golfers was quite low. From the perspective of ease of wearing, we used the third prototype, which is similar to a golf glove. We evaluated the effectiveness of this prototype in maintaining the pinch force at the target force while gripping a golf club. Participants putter continuously for 30 seconds while maintaining their grip force. They did this under two conditions, that is without EMS and with EMS. With EMS condition, the system applied EMS to the flexor pollicis longus muscle when the estimated grip force was less than 10 in. The results indicate that our system could assist novices in maintaining grip force while putting by comparing the coefficient of variation. We envision the target users as individuals who require sensitive fingertip force control and are sensitive to tactile sensation on their fingertips. Our wearable system is designed to assist with fingertip force control interactively regardless of what they grip. For future work, we plan to improve the system's accuracy, miniaturize its components, and explore other types of fingertip force control for a variety of users who require sensitive fingertip force control.